In this lesson, we'll be looking at Descartes' rule of signs. Now, don't worry, if you like me, you want to say like Descartes or I don't know. But apparently it's Descartes, okay? So, if I give you a question like x to the power of 5 minus 3x to the power of 4 minus 2x squared cubed, sorry, plus 4x squared minus 6x plus 1. Maybe you've heard your teacher talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra. What that tells us is that if this was an equation, then because this has a highest power of 5, there should be 5 answers. But some of those answers are going to be real, and some of those answers might be imaginary, okay? Or you could think of as complex. So fun the fundamental theorem of algebra says that there would be five of those. But what Descartes' rule of signs helps us to do is it helps us to try get a better idea of how many of these five are going to be real, which would be either positive or negative and how many of them would be imaginary. It's not a perfect solution. It only gives us possibilities, but it can't give us the exact uh, combination, but it only gives us the possible scenarios. So let me show you how it works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by looking at how many possible, <laughs> why am I doing that? How many positive, well, let's actually do this. Um, we have real, and then we have imaginary. Okay, so under the real, your roots could either be positive or they could be negative. Okay, so the way that it works is the following. To look at the positive, all that I want you to do is go like this. Let's start with this first one. Is it positive or negative? It's positive, okay? So write that down. The next one, it's negative. Write that down. The next one, negative. Write that down. Next one's positive. The next one's negative, and the next one's positive. Okay, now, as you go from one to the next, every time the sign changes, I want you to add one. So here it goes from positive to negative, add one. Here it goes from negative to a negative, so that's not changing, so you don't add anything. Now it's going from a negative to a positive, so you add, so that's two. Then it's going from a positive to a negative, that's three. And then it's going from a negative to a positive, so that's four. Okay, so for the positive, it could either be four, and then I want you to just minus two, and then minus another two until you get down to zero. So we could either get four positive roots or we could get two positive roots, uh, real roots, or zero positive real roots, okay? We don't know which one it is, but the Descartes rule just helps us to get an idea. Okay, now what we're gonna do for the negative part is I want you to go rewrite this entire equation, but re replace all of the x's with negative x, so it's gonna look like this. Okay, and then, so if you have negative x to the power of five, that would be negative, if you think about it. A negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative is gonna be negative. So that's gonna become negative nine x five. Negative x to the power of four, that's positive because it's negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. That's going to be positive. So this will just remain x4. Then if you look at this one, that's going to be negative. So it's going to cause this part in the front to become a positive. So it'll be like this. Let's actually write it a little bit lower down. This part over here is going to be positive. This is negative, so it's gonna make an, a positive with that negative, so it's gonna become that like this, and then plus 16. So now we're gonna look at the D Descartes sign changes again. So that's um, negative and a negative, and then a positive, and then a positive, and then a positive. So let's see. So here it didn't change, so we don't say anything. Here it changes, so that's one. Then it doesn't change again. So there's only one, so we're just gonna do that. I'm not gonna minus two over here because then that's gonna take you to minus one and you can't get minus one answers. That doesn't make sense. Okay, now there's no way to really work out the imaginary except for the following. What I want you to do is the following. I want you to make a column now that says positive, negative, and imaginary, and then total. Now we know from the fundamental theorem of algebra that there should always be five answers. So let's put a five over there. So if we start with this first one, four, 
then let's say for the negative, let's say for the negative there would be one, then those already add up to five, so then there would have to be zero imaginary. But now what if the other combination is that you have two positives and then the negative is always gonna be a one, then that adds up to three, so then there would have to be two imaginary so that the total is five. And then there could be zero for the positive and then there would have to be one for the negative. That means there would have to be four imaginaries so that your total is five. So we're not gonna actually do this in this lesson, but if you had to go solve this equation and go find out the answers, you either gonna find out that there would be four positive reals and one negative, or there would be two positives, one negative, and two imaginary, or there would be zero positive, one negative, and four imaginaries. So maybe you wanna try that. I don't know how easy this one's gonna be to solve, but your answer is either gonna be this category over here, this category over here, or this category over here. The Descartes rule doesn't tell us the exact uh, combinations. It only gives us possibilities. That's why I said, yeah, determine the possible combinations. So here's our next one. So we start off by finding all of the positive options. And we do that by just looking at the sign changes. So here we have a positive. Then there's another positive. Then there's a negative, another negative, a positive, and a positive. So if we had to look at the sign changes now, that would be nothing because it stays positive to positive. Then it changes to a negative. So that's one sign change. Then it stays negative so that we don't add anything. Then it changes again. So that's two sign changes that we've had so far. And then it doesn't change. So we only got two. And then always remember to minus two. There we go, until you get down to zero. For the negative... You just go and rewrite this entire equation, but wherever you see x, you're gonna replace it with negative x, okay? And so now we just need to go simplify. So this would give you a negative um, x5. So we're gonna put that in the front, negative. This would remain positive. This part is negative, so it's gonna make this part over here a positive. So it's gonna be plus, and then this part would remain positive, so that would just stay negative 36x squared. This would become negative like that. So now we can go ahead and look at all the sign changes. So well, let's first write it down. So there's a negative term, then there's a positive term, then it's a positive term, then it's a negative, then it's a negative, and then it's a positive. So if we look at the sign changes, there's one, then it doesn't change when we go to there. Then there's another sign change, it goes from positive to negative, so that's two, then it stays the same, and then it changes again, so that was three. So you can put a three over here, and then you can minus one, I mean, sorry, minus two, which gives you one, and that's it. You don't wanna minus two again, because that's gonna take you to negative. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go write positive, negative, imaginary, and then total. And the total would have to be five, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, which says that the highest power tells us how many answers there would be. So that's gonna be five. Now for the positive, let's start off by using a two. And then for the negative, let's start off by using a three. Then if you add those together, that gives you five. So then the imaginary, imaginary would have to be zero. For the, let's do another one. So let's do positive two again, but let's do a one for the negative. And so if you add those together, that gives you three, so there would have to be two imaginaries. Now, let's use a two again for the positive. Oh no, now we can use zero. Let's use zero, and then, and then let's use three for the negative. We just gotta make sure we use every possible combination. So if that's three, then this would have to be two, so that the total is five. Now we could also say zero over here, and then one, and then this would have to be four, so that the total is five. And there we go, we've used up every possible combination. So if you had to go solve this equation, you either gonna get, you're gonna get five answers. They're either gonna be two positives and three negatives and zero imaginaries, or it's gonna look like this, or it's gonna look like this, or it's gonna look like that.
here's our last example. So to work out the positives, you're just gonna look at the sign changes. So this one's quite easy. There's a positive in the front, and then there's a negative. So there was one sign change. So you're just gonna put one. Then for the negative part, you're gonna replace the x with negative, um, negative x. Now negative x to the power of six, that's gonna remain positive because it's six negatives, which is gonna be a positive. So that's gonna be x six take away 64. So there's also gonna be one sign change. So then if we had to go look at our um, number of, let's actually write this over here. So potential positives, then negatives, and then imaginary, and then total. So the total would have to be six. According to the fundamental theorem of algebra, the highest power is a six. So there could be one positive and one negative. Then that means there would have to be four imaginaries. And that's it, there's no other, there's no other option. So that is, because there's only one option, this is where Descartes' rule is really good because we can be 100% sure that if we had to go solve this, this is what we would get. That's the only option we have. So you would get one positive root, one negative, and four imaginary roots.